Welcome back to the channel. This week we're looking at how to create a masonry Pinterest style image gallery with Hugo and Bootstrap 5. We'll also be using a JS plugin to create the masonry style. For this video you'll need to have the latest Hugo and Visual Cute Studio code installed and set up and you can check out my video which I'll link above if you need help installing Hugo or Visual Studio code. On completion of this video you'll be able to use resources.bytype to access all the images in a page bundle. You'll be able to display them in the grid layout with Bootstrap and you'll be able to use the masonry JavaScript library to alter the grid layout. So we're going to be mimicking the masonry gallery style which has been made popular by the Pinterest website. To get started with this tutorial I've left a link in the description section below for a github repository and you'll be able to download all of the code using the green button. You can download a zip file. If you're a more advanced Git user you can clone the entire repository but I recommend just downloading the zip folder and then you can open up that folder in Visual Studio Code. I've put a heap of photos that I downloaded off unsplash.com. You're welcome to have a go with your own Hugo project. Otherwise, you can download mine and I've conveniently got some images waiting there for you. Before we start, a quick message from this video's sponsor. As a Skillshare teacher, I've partnered up with them to offer you a free one month trial using my link below. I personally produce full length Hugo courses on Skillshare on a variety of topics. And there are many other great teachers on Skillshare ready to help you level up your skills for your next big project. Click on the link below for the one month free trial. You can cancel at any time and you'll be helping out this channel. So if you open up the files in Visual Studio Code, you'll notice in the content folder and then in the gallery folder, I've put a bunch of files in there. I've got them off unsplash.com. They're royalty free images. And what we're going to first do is create an index.md file for that folder. So what we'll do, we'll use the command hugo new and we'll create the file in the gallery folder and it'll be slash index.md. We'll then go into the file and we'll make a type for it and we'll call it gallery and then we'll assign it a menu link. So menu of main, because that's what the main menu is called in this project and we'll give it a weight of 20. Let's then go into our layouts folder and we'll create a new folder called gallery to match the type that we just assigned to it and then we'll copy our single.html into there. We'll then create a new row with dot row and then we'll create a new column. So we'll use dot col dash six and then for that'll be for extra small and small and then for medium we'll do dot col dash md dash four so we get three columns because four is a third of 12 and then for extra large and greater we'll use four column layout so it'll be dot col dash xl dash three because three is a quarter of 12. We'll then do padding below of three and padding either side of two. Now what we'll have to do is create our image variable so we'll do images colon equals and we'll make it dot resources dot by types so that'll get all the resources of the type image in the folder. So that's our folder. So all of the image resources will be captured. We'll then create a range and we'll range over images. We'll put our end tag in and then we'll create our image tag omg and the source will be dot rel permalink to minimize reflow we'll provide the height and the width so the height will be equal to in curly braces dot height and width in curly braces will be dot width and it's got capital w and capital H for height and width. And because we've used Hugo's imaging, image processing to we've retrieved the images, we can then access that height and width. And alt, we'll just call it gallery image for now. And then we'll add a class. We we'll use img dash fluid since we're using Bootstrap. We'll then open up a new terminal and we'll run Hugo server. 
we're going to open up a new terminal and we'll run Hugo server. And then we'll control click the link and have a look in the browser. Then go to the gallery menu item. And it's kind of displaying how we want it, except we need to get rid of all the white space. Luckily, there is a some demonstration code on the Bootstrap website for integrating the masonry image gallery library. So here's the page and I'll leave a link to it in the description below. What they've done here is they've used the most simple method to integrate it. Here's the text for the CDN version of it so you don't have to worry about installing it as an Indian NPM dependency. They've got this information here they're adding it to the row so what we'll do they've showed an example here you can put basically anything you like into the columns. We'll inspect and we've got row and then the cols and then on the row they've put in that text. So what we'll do is we'll have a go at it. We'll grab the script, go into our partials, script footer, and we'll add it on the end. We'll then grab the data masonry, copy that, and we'll go back into our single.html, and we'll add it onto the row, we'll save that. And now our layout's been fixed by the JavaScript file. So it's displaying just as we want it to. So currently we've got our four column layout and we'll bring it down to three. And notice it all reshuffles. And then we can bring it into two and it reshuffles again. It's quite dynamic the way it does reshuffle. It's not really um, a behavior that the end user will see, but as you can see, it does reshuffle for you as you bring it out. And that's why it's so powerful, this JavaScript plugin. It's way better than any CSS you could write by hand, the way it's handled there. The style is dynamically inputted by the JavaScript library, and that's what creates the Mason layout. But you will notice if you check out the actual image that we've got the height and the width generated by Hugo, and that helps minimize reflow when you're initially loading the page. You will notice the actual image itself is quite large, all of these images. I've got a course on Hugo image processing and responsive images, and I go through the entire process of resizing images, not only making them optimized and smaller, but responsively so that the actual image size that's served varies depending on the screen size. So a bit of a shout out there. If you check in the description below, you'll see links to my Skillshare full length courses and you get that 30, free, 30 day free trial so you can go through all my courses and there's so much to learn it's incredible. So that's it for this week's video remember to hit that bell notification button and like and subscribe to the channel. If you've got any questions please leave them below in the comment sections more than happy to answer any questions you've got otherwise that's it until next week.